The reason why Zen is so peculiar is that it has, to begin with, no doctrines that can be stated in words, nothing that it requires anybody to believe. It has no system of formulated philosophy. In fact, it doesn't really have anything to say at all. What is remarkable about Zen is that it endeavors to convey its message the realization which constitutes awakening in Buddhism without the intermediary of words and ideas. There are four statements which sum up the character of Zen Buddhism and they are as follows. A direct transmission of awakening outside the scriptures. No dependence on words and letters. Direct pointing and finally, seeing into one's own nature and becoming a Buddha, which is to say, an awakened one. I particularly want to concentrate on what is meant for the moment by direct pointing, because this is the technique in which Zen excels. Zen feels that all that human beings are seeking, all that they really fundamentally desire, whether it be complete contentment of the heart or understanding why this universe exists and what our place in it is. All this understanding is not something obscure and far off, but something completely obvious and lying open for us to anybody who cares to look at it in this immediate moment which we are living now. It is as if to say, the whole secret of life, everything that you could possibly desire, is yours at this moment. And if you cannot lay hold on it now, you will never be able to. The difficulty is that it's very hard to convince people of this by talking about it because all talk, all systems of ideas are in relation to reality itself somewhat like a menu in relation to a dinner. And those who try to get comfort, to get wisdom out of books or by believing in various systems of ideas and philosophies, such people are really devouring the menu instead of eating the dinner. Now how then is one to divert people's attention from the menu to the dinner itself? There is only one way and that is to point directly at the dinner. To stop talking about it, to stop writing about it and to point at it directly. We're all very convinced indeed that we exist as a kind of self or ego and our selfishness is one of our major problems. It would, wouldn't it, to be rather fascinating to find that when we look for ourselves we are not really there. as if where we expected to find ourselves in the center of all our experience, we found only a hole, an empty space. And then the problem of myself, my happiness, my peace of mind, would have disappeared. There is no one whom one has to pacify, whom one has to make happy. you're not actually there. But of course one can't discover that just by hearing about it. You have to look and see. That's why one of the fundamental questions in all Oriental philosophy is the simple question, who are you? Look and try to find out who it is that is trying to find out who it is that is trying to find out. 
This is, after all, a parable of what everybody is doing who is engaged in what we in the West call self-seeking. And this is really a stupid, a somebody sitting down solemnly in a chair and gnashing and gnashing away, trying to bite his own teeth. When the Buddha was in the Gridrakuta mountain, he turned a flower in his fingers and held it before his listeners. Everyone was silent. Only Mahakashapa smiled at this revelation, although he tried to control the lines of his face. The Buddha said, I have the eye of the true teaching, the heart of nirvana, of awakening, the true aspect of the formless, the ineffable stride of the doctrine. It is not expressed by words, but especially transmitted beyond teaching. This teaching I now give to Mahakashapa. And this is the same sort of answer that Tozan gave when he was asked, what is reality? He just said, this flax weighs three pounds. An ordinary statement, just as holding up the flower, is an ordinary action. If I talk all the time, and never listen to what others have to say, I shall lose touch with my fellow men. In the same way, if I think all the time, which is in a way talking to myself inwardly, I shall lose touch with the reality with which words are about which they're intended to symbolize. It is the fundamental insight of Zen that by an excess of thinking, Men have lost touch with the real world in which they live. The solution to this problem is to be silent in one's mind and to look again at the real world, not thinking, but seeing it directly. This can't be talked about. If I want you to listen to music, any advice to do so will drown out the music. The directest way is to play the music itself. you cannot put what it is into words. And this indeed is a central point of Zen and of Buddhist understanding in general. That reality is beyond words. And that one must not confuse the world of things as we think about them and talk about them and name them with the world as it actually is. Because in the world of ideas and words and conceptions and inherited social notions, every one of us is perfectly convinced that he is a self, an ego. But when we step out of that world of conventional ideas into the clear daylight of reality and with wide open eyes look for ourselves what do we find <laughs>